How things, man? Good. Good to look up to you again. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia have you listed at 6'4". They must have measured that when you were 10 years old. Or <laughs> you look at this trophy. Have you fallen in love with it? It brings back memories of one of the best nights of my life. And my dad was instrumental. And I always say he was my first coach. I want to captain Barbados. I want to play for West Indies. I want to captain West Indies. And I want to win a World Cup. Wow. <laughs> so you're a much braver man than I am. <laughs> I don't want to generalize, but almost every little kid growing up in the Caribbean at the time that I did, I don't know about your time, cricket was the thing. You know, for me, the West Indies were the champions in the late 70s, coming into the early 80s. And I remember playing a lot of cricket in the backyard with my brother. And then my dad would talk about a game that he played. And it's only as I got bigger, I realized how fictitious it was. He hit a ball in the air and it took three days to come back down for the guys to catch it. And I believe that I, I was sold on that as a kid coming up until I got old enough to realize it was virtually impossible. Uh, I, I don't know what your memories are. Mine quite similar. Uh, my dad, cricket fanatic, um, playing a lot at local level. Um, and a lot of persons his age would know him. Um, he never lets me forget he has a record in Barbados, seven catches at short leg. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> my first recollection would be him throwing balls to me after work. Um, so he always says he come home tired, um, just ready to lay down when he go and pass out. And I'd run with a ball and a bat at three years old, uh, just wanting him to throw balls for me. I remember smashing it outside of the garden and I wasn't allowed to cross the road because where we grew up, we had a very busy street. Right. And to this day, I don't know who saw me run across the road for the ball, but you know, when I got back, he was not pleased. <laughs> and I felt the wrath. <laughs> so that ties in nicely to one of my first memories. He would say today that I probably drove the ball back as a three-year-old that I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was instrumental in that development. You hear so many stories. I mean, my dad, you know, he was never involved. He would never, never played with us. You hear so many nice Caribbean stories of fathers who played and assisting in the development of their young kids. Yeah, my dad was instrumental. And I always say he was my first coach. I guess I was his number one fan back then. I think he's my number one fan now. Um, and it was a nice um, turning of the tables because he's ushered me right away through my career. Although he wouldn't have been able to do it on the field, uh, he set me up nicely and, and allowed me to, I guess, become the cricketer and become the man that I am today. My first recollection of a cricket World Cup was with limited overs in 83, 82, 83, when West Indies lost to India. And that's out. Yes, it's all over this time. Lost his nerve in there. I remember waking up so early that morning to watch West Indies play India in that final at Lords. And at the end of that loss, Carlos, let me tell you, I don't think I went to school for a week. I just stood in the backyard feeling sick. I mean, that's the sort of passion I suspect all West Indians have. But in terms of memories of T20 World Cups, what was yours? Probably first World Cup, Chris Gale smashing 100. Oh, that's out somewhere. There goes Gale again. That is the most sensational shot of the day. We've seen a few. I think when everyone first heard about T20, it was all about quick 30s. If you got to 50, it was like, whoa, what an achievement. And then Chris Gale comes and blasts 100 and it's like, okay. And I think that kind of pushed the standard just a bit higher, pushed the bar just a bit higher. And that's one of my best recollections. And you're thinking then, what is the path? I love test cricket, but T20 bursts onto the scene. And it's all about vibrancy, the colors, the atmosphere. And in some respects, it reminds you a bit, in your case, Carnival, in my case, Crop Over. Um, and it's just everything buzzing, everyone buzzing. So you had to take note of it. I'd be lying if I tell you that back then, I knew it would have reached the heights that it's reached today. Correct. Back then you thought this was a way to usher new players in. Right. Everything happens so much quicker, so right. they're under more pressure right away. You don't have to sit through a first class game and then see if they can hold the nerve after T on the fourth day of a game to win a game. At that point in time, this would be the way to usher guys from T20 into ODIs 
and then you obviously reach the pinnacle of test cricket and you find that it's actually going the other way around now where persons are playing the career and then they're retiring and playing T20 cricket. You look at this trophy, have you fallen in love with it? What sort of memories come back to you? Um, I remember cradling it, Kolkata 2016. I got a chance to get a selfie, call my mom and dad. Wow. Um, so they would have had a bit of celebration, all, all bit virtually. I could just remember, there were so many good things about that night. The women winning, the women staying to celebrate with us. My girlfriend, now my wife, she was there as well and she celebrated with us. And she has a picture with me and the trophy as well. So when I look at this trophy, it is not only a beautiful piece of silverware, but it brings back memories of one of the best nights of my life for a majority of reasons. So yeah, I'm a crier, so I will stop here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get too emotional, but... Some of us yeah. did cry, actually. I, I mean, I, I sort of stuck around at the ground, never stayed at a cricket ground so late in my entire life, sitting under one of the lighting pylons with a colleague of mine who worked on it. He must have left the ground two, three o'clock in the morning or something like that. You know, it was just sort of phenomenal. Some people are still praying for divine intervention. Carlos Brathwaite! Carlos Brathwaite! Remember the name! History for the West Indies! What a match we've had here at Eden Gardens! The line that came out at the end of it, remember the name, and it's a little bit embarrassing sitting here talking to you about it. But you would have heard that oftentimes repeated to you on tape when you first look back. I had never asked you this before, but when you first saw video and, and heard it, how did you feel about that? I guess I didn't appreciate, I didn't appreciate it back then. It was just glued into Obviously, watching I knew replay the last six or all four sixes, and you hear it at the end. But then I remember there was a watershed moment. I'd stayed on in India to go to IPL, and just something just came over me watching it again. Right. And I just started to cry. Right. And I think it's that, that moment that I started to separate each moment. Each ball was an event. Um, then after that fourth six, your commentary was an event as well. Remember the name. And it's something that People hardly say Carlos Brathwaite without saying remember the name. People always then say, you know, I was here when it happened. I believe that you could do it. Some people say, I, I didn't believe you could do it. I kind of put myself under a bit of pressure to live up to it. Um, obviously, Totally every, my fault. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I put a, a bit of pressure on myself to live up to it, but I've now come to grips with that, come to peace with that, and now I appreciate just being a professional cricketer. You keep working at your craft, you keep trying to get better, you keep performing. And if remember the name is supposed to happen again, hopefully your ambition will be in the commentary box and we can make it as spectacular as it was in 2016. We came close in 2019. Yeah. Um, very close. Very close, very close. Down the ground, but feeler underneath and taken. New Zealand win. The dream is diminished for Carlos Brathwaite. There were a number of things that you were doing in the build-up to that. People don't forget, don't remember your three wickets in that final. Eh? That was critical and how well you bowled throughout the tournament. So I just said, remember this name, Carlos Brathwaite. He's built like a house, good all-round cricketer, good bowler, and he can smack it. And so at the end, because of all the things that were surrounding you guys in that team, there was a little bit of acrimony coming into the tournament. The team had taken on a siege mentality almost, feeling things were against them. And all of that emotion, knowing that and being around the team, all of that emotion came out for you guys, not for me, but for you guys. It was wonderful to see you guys lift that trophy. If you think back as a youth, would that have been holding this to be one of your dreams in childhood? Yeah, it was a dream. I, I had a chat with my mom some years ago now, and she just asking me, like, what are your dreams cricket-wise? Because this would have been 
a period in time where I wanted to drop out of school to play cricket, just couldn't get both done. She'd taken out a student loan. So I had no money to pay back the student loan and I wanted to drop out of school. So the only thing I had to do was to make it as a cricketer. And I always refer to that moment um, as one of the moments that gave me a bit of extra drive if I ever needed it because my mum worked her socks off to try to get me through university, college, um, provide, and then I went the other way, I started to play cricket, and she allowed me to. Right. I think that was the biggest thing. And you know, in that moment, I was like, Mum, I'm going to play for Barbados. I want to captain Barbados. I want to play for West Indies. I want to captain West Indies, and I want to win a World Cup in the moment. And I'm pleased enough to sit here today beside you and say that I've accomplished um, those dreams. So I think my mum, as I know she is, is very proud of that. You have helped to to sort of take this trophy and tournament to another level. Articulate that for me, that Carlos Brathwaite, the last person to illuminate this was you, 2016. Inspire an entire generation of players. How does that feel? It was a privilege. Wow. That's, that's the best way to put it. You know, some players search the whole career for that one moment whether it be a game, an innings, a ball, a spell. Um, my moment happened to be on the biggest stage um, against the old enemy. Right. Um, and to do it the way that I did it, I could never imagine having such an impact on West Indies cricket and on world cricket. So for you to articulate that the way you just did, it gives it an even bigger sense of pride. Mm. Um, to be able to deliver the trophy, to win a game for your country, to play a game for your country, is a magnificent achievement. And those need to be celebrated. But to go on further and play in a World Cup, play in a final, win the trophy, and then be a big part of it, yeah, it's massive. Small group of people that have done that. So now we're leading into the next T20 World Cup. I can't say who will win, I'm not going to put myself out there for that, but I'm expecting to see England. I'm expecting to see West Indies. I'm expecting to see the Australians and the Indians in that semi-final. I can't pick one. I just say West Indies are going to win. Wow. <laughs> so you're a much braver man than I am. <laughs> um, four teams, India, West Indies, England, and I would say Pakistan are dark horses. Um, Pakistan is a tournament team, and you know Pakistan on their day is as good as anyone in the world. Carlos, it's been really nice talking to you once again and, and just sharing and reminiscing on those memories and, and the insights of your experience. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, Bishman. Mm -hmm.